Hey everybody, 8 Josh here, and welcome back to Meridian Springs, and uh, we're headed out of the swamp today, and we're adding Black Wildebeest in a really big habitat. Uh, we're just outside of the moose habitat, and the, uh, the lemur mountain, which is uh, right there. But I had this big empty space right here, and I was kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do here. I thought about maybe making like two habitats, and I was like, you know, some of the African animals, they can, they like really big habitats, plus uh, there's a lot of options if we wanted to do like a, a mixed habitat as well. But uh, yeah, we have the uh, the uh, four by four ride coming out of the moose habitat there. And so I also thought it was a good opportunity to make use of all that space by having the ride go all the way through it. Plus this is like, this is the edge of the map. Uh, the the river, if you don't know, is kind of the uh, barrier of our zoo, but also right here, it just happens to be right at the edge of the buildable area of the map. But yeah, I wanted to also put another station for the ride because uh, we have, they, they go through the moose habitat and then wildebeest habitat and I was like well we should probably have another stop right outside of that so I put that here I also thought it'd be kind of cool if it was sort of like kind of like in a cave or like little natural arch under the terrain I don't know if we'll do like I was thinking maybe we'll put like a building on top of that thought that might kind of make it look cool just adding like I like to try to add different elevations and things like that throughout the zoo but I also thought this would be a good opportunity to add like a big big viewing area for the guests so I did the big elevated path there that has kind of three different um, three different like little viewing spots I also decided to give the the wildebeest their own staff group because I was like well the the lemur the staff for the lemur habitat is kind of around the bend there it's not that far away but the lemur habitat itself is pretty big just because it's on the mountain and then this habitat is pretty big so I thought that might be too much space or too much ground for the staff to cover so I was like you know I'll just I'll just put another uh, staff group there also just doing a little bit of uh, just kind of pre-planning as far as like where where I want the path to go will eventually meet up because coming around that corner uh, back there is uh, right outside the Stormbirds uh, restaurant. But the other thing I thought would be kind of cool is even though uh, with the, the staff building right there, uh, I decided to do a uh, null barrier because I thought it'd be kind of cool to, to give the illusion that it's like inside the habitat itself. And so I just put like the logs there with the null barrier and I was trying to figure out this little back corner I was like okay they can escape back there so I'm just gonna put some trees there because eventually a lot of times the trees will just block the animals like they can't go by uh, through them but apparently the wildebeest can because I was like what do I need to put there so I just grabbed those same uh, logs and I just put some uh, hidden under the uh, uh, the trees there also right here I decided to uh, make the uh, the track for the ride uh, slightly underground to make it look like the Jeeps are uh, driving on the ground instead of a track. But right here, the train was a little uneven and the track uh, kind of pops out a little bit. But I was like, well, let me just cover it up with like some wood and make it look like a little bridge kind of thing. And I thought that worked out uh, pretty well. I also thought we maybe, maybe needed some uh, lights around there as well. So I used the, uh, the South American uh, torches which maybe not necessarily safest thing to have an open flame in an animal habitat but I was like you know what this is uh, this isn't real anyway so uh, I'm gonna do that uh, for the viewing areas here I decided to go for uh, like a circular building uh, originally I was gonna do something square I was like man I always do square it's always like it's also like the easiest shape to do it's a lot harder at least for me to do like circular 
buildings. So uh, I was just kind of putting together like the railings here, again using uh, those wooden planks that I have been using a lot lately. I just like how kind of rustic and weathered they look, but yeah, it's a pretty simple like little covered spot for the guests to be able to uh, be able to view the wildebeests. The other thing I was thinking about, I don't know if maybe we'll add another animal in this habitat because like I said, there is a lot of space. I was thinking maybe the giraffes because that could also be pretty cool as a guest like this elevated walk walkway. Uh, that would kind of put the guests like kind of right at the same level as giraffes. So uh, that could be pretty cool to put in here. But yeah, I think this is gonna do it for the time lapse. So let's go ahead and jump into the real time gameplay. All right, and here we are, the completed black wildebeest habitat. We got we got a couple having their lunch right now. These guys are so cool looking. But yeah, so this is the area where we uh, added them. So just for reference, here's the uh, moose habitat and uh, the lemur mountain there. So. Yeah, so we had this big empty space here. It was kind of, it's kind of like long and narrow. So it, it felt like this was the best option to just do like a big wide open habitat for them. We are, oh, we already have a baby. We already have a baby. Look at him, so cute. Um, but yeah, so here also is the elevated walkway, which I think pretty cool also put uh, just a bunch of big old trees because, again, I wanted to make it feel uh, just kind of like uh, jungly, kind of like the Meridian area is in uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. But yeah, I really like, I like the uh, elevated walkway. I like the little viewing spots we have. I just think it turned out pretty cool. So the guests can, they got a viewing area there. They could also walk over here. I like this one because it kind of, juts out a little bit uh, to get a little bit more of a view and then we also have this one right here so they can kind of see over that way I also thought about I didn't think of this until after after like I built everything but we could maybe do an extra viewing spot coming off of here because this is just like a little transition walkway between the lemurs and the moose walkway so we could maybe have like another little viewing spot that comes out here it's a little bit higher up so i don't know let me know your thoughts on that because we could uh we could definitely add that but yeah so here is also the uh, the ride i decided to put it like i said uh slightly under the ground so hopefully it'll look like the jeep is actually just driving on the surface rather than a track. I decided to make it uh, sort of like, you know, right here, if they're driving on it a lot, the ground would be uh, kind of trampled on. There wouldn't be like grass and stuff growing. And then, yeah, I, I think I mentioned it in the time lapse, but yeah, we could probably put giraffes in here because, like I said, I think the walkway here is a pretty good height for giraffes. It'd be awesome if. There's a way like guests could actually feed the giraffes. I know like my local zoo has something like that, but and then this is the like I said, this is the edge of the map. I I'm trying to like not use actual habitat barriers. This area is kind of tricky because like the wildebeest and even the moose, like they can swim through this water, so they could easily escape. So I just put these wooden logs around here I I had this one come out a little bit so that way they can access the water here if they want to uh, they also have a little bit here so if they you know for whatever reason want to get a drink from there rather than uh, this spot or also give them some water over here I might do the same thing for the moose habitat because I just put like the uh, the chain link fence there and then the the log barrier there I don't know I might I might take this log idea and just bring it all the way around here because I just think that, I don't know, I like not using the actual habitat barriers themselves. But one of the reasons I wanted to add these guys in because I uh, I really like the idea of kind of 
uh, theming some stuff around the machines in Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, you know, the, the last episode we had uh, the Snap Mall Cafe, which is uh, the Snap Mall in Horizon Zero Dawn is kind of based off of a alligator or a crocodile. Uh, we have the Stormbirds. So I was like, well, what other animals or machines are there in Horizon Zero Dawn? And there's one, it's called the Charger, which is sort of a, kind of like a cattle or bull animal. And I was trying to think like, well, what's the closest animal to that in, uh, whoa, I think I just came barreling through there. But what's the closest animal on Planet Zoo? And I was like, well, we have the wildebeest, there's the water buffalo, or maybe the bison. But I, w I decided to go for these guys because I was like, well, if we want to do some other African animals, like maybe the giraffe, which actually there's the tall neck in, is it tall neck or long neck? I can't remember. I think it's tall neck in Horizon Zero Dawn is kind of based off a giraffe. So that would kind of knock out two machines in one habitat. But, that, you know, we could that'll lend it to like uh, signage and things like that. If you didn't see the last episode, which you definitely should. We did this little swampy area for the snap moths, but so I did, I got this like Horizon Zero Dawn font and made like a little custom menu. Also made like a snap mall kind of uh, sign using the Australia pieces. So this is the kind of stuff I, I want to start doing more in this zoo. Actually kind of surprised I didn't think of that sooner, but you know, like I said, so if we do something like that with the signage over here, we can kind of do like, you know, if we want to do like a little, I don't know, plaza or seating area food court, you know, we can name it something like Tall Necks Food Court or something like that. I don't know, but that's just kind of where my head was at. Just to let you know why I kind of went with the, the wildebeest. So that's the kind of thing we'll probably be doing more of moving forward. I also, going back to the, the swamp over here, I did add some more details. Uh, last episode, the, the swamp wasn't quite finished. Uh, we did finish the, the swamp area, the walkway here. So it kind of comes around here. And actually, let's change it to nighttime here, because this, this is where you really get the, the swampy feeling. Come around here, added another boxless shop here so here give them a little uh give them a little drink stand but uh yeah we have the the saltwater crocodile habitat over here so the guests get a nice view of like there they go that bad boy right there uh, oh did they have a baby looks like we have a little baby crocodile so we walk over here we've got the snap mall cafe and the menu and uh yeah i I closed off this side, so I think that looks really cool. Just really feels like a swamp in my opinion. I love it. Got the like vines going everywhere. Also added this like little, uh, little kind of like archway here to kind of just be like, yeah, this is the uh, this is the start of the uh, swamp area. This is definitely. Uh, I was saying this on the live stream over on my Twitch channel. This is definitely one of my favorite things I've ever built in Planet Zoo. I just I think it's. So cool, has so much character. I also put a, a line of trees back here to kind of block off the view so when the guests are over here, they can't really see out that way uh, any. And then as we develop this, you know, it'll kind of, kind of feel like it's, you know, separated in its own little spot from the zoo. So we'll have more paths and stuff obviously coming out this way. Also did like this little retaining wall. So for our ride up here, comes up here, goes around there, and then we'll have another station there. Also, uh, we'll, we'll do another little viewing spot here for the crocodiles, and then that path will go out that way for whatever we decide for the future. So you still got a lot to do, obviously, but as you look at what we've developed so far, the zoo is definitely coming along, looking really, really good. 
yeah, I'm going to leave this episode here. So as always, be sure to leave your comment suggestions and feedback down below. I am 8 Josh, and thanks for watching. See ya. Oh.